going to do is give you some notes on the candle lab we did the other day, and also I'm going to do some experiments here. I'm going to need, though, um, I have almost everything I need except I need some paper money. So if someone has like a hundred dollar bill, they can look. Do you have some? Yeah. I have All right, bring it up, sir. I promise I'll give it back. He didn't even ask me to give it back. He's, oh, I got money here. <laughs> but I will give it back to him. Don't burn it. Oh, well, you don't have something. Oh, you can get a sharp and put two zeros. Okay. <laughs> now, I said that um, I would give this back to him, right? Mm -hmm. And I will. <laughs> Salt. Salt. All right. Now, the name of this lab is called Candle Notes, or Money to Burn. Copy it down, please. Yeah, he might want this back for his lunch today, huh? So I better get this back to him. That's a candle. Good <laughs> job. The candle is made of a fuel called paraffin. We call it wax. There's more than one kind of wax. There's wax on an apple, but you don't like apples on fire, I don't think. Uh, there's wax in your ear, but I hope you don't set your ears on fire to see better at night. So this is a type, specific type of wax called paraffin. Make sure you're spelling that correctly. There's three places we can get paraffin. Does anybody know where they get the paraffin to make a candle? You know one place? Place. Walmart. That's not right. You know? Beeswax. Yeah. Now this is not a beeswax candle. Um, beeswax is more expensive. Um, you know, the other day when you lit this, it was melting and dripping into the pan. Correct? Okay. Well, it turns out beeswax burns really efficiently. It doesn't drip. So this is not a beeswax candle. Those are more expensive, so I use cheap candles. Now, there's another place I can get really cheap candles, and that is from animal fat. A long time ago, pioneers would take an animal that they butchered, and they'd remove the fat, and they'd heat it up. You know what fat does when you heat it? It, it melts. It turns to a liquid. And they dip a string into that liquid and get it soaked with fat, and then they let it cool off and harden. And they dip it again. They keep doing that until it's nice and thick. The problem with a tallow candle, though, is that they smell like bacon or something when you're burning the candle or, you know, steaks cooking. And they smoke a lot. There's a lot of smoke to put out. So I didn't use tallow candles either. I don't even think you can buy them anymore. They're a really cheap candle to make, though, because you make them out of leftover animal. These are made from petroleum, just like the gasoline in your car. So oddly enough, chemically, that candle is not that different from the gas you put in your car which is kind of nice because the gas in your car burns and makes the car go, that candle also burns. Chemically, they're cousins. Now, I want to talk to you about the candle that you lit yesterday. Why does a candle burn the way it does? And you might have never thought about this. Maybe you light candles and go, oh, big deal. But why doesn't that string burn up? If I take a piece of string and light it on fire, it's gone in a second. How come when I first light a candle, the flame is really tiny, and then it grows, and it stops growing after a while? What's causing those things to happen? Why did the, the candle obviously melted and got shorter and burned it, but when I waited, it was lighter? What's causing that to happen? Where did the extra candle go when you burn a candle? So here's how it happens. There's actually five things that happen when you light a match on your candle wick. So the first thing is, you set the string on fire. So when I came around and lit your candles yesterday, you may have noticed that at first, it had a little tiny flame, and that's because the only thing burning was the string. Now, once that string catches on fire, it gets hot, and the heat starts to melt the top of the candle. It turns it from solid paraffin into liquid paraffin. By the way, paraffin has a very low melting temperature. It takes almost no heat to melt a candle, 148 degrees Fahrenheit. Have you ever bought candles and put them in a car on a summer day and when you get them home they are not shaped like they were at the store? No. Or you come home after a vacation and the air conditioner was off and all the candles are going like this? How hot's it get here in town? 
100, 110 degrees. I saw it hit 123 the year I moved it That's hot. Inside your car, when the windows are rolled up, up in the summer, it's about 150 to 170 degrees in that car. Has anybody ever been up in the attic of your house in the summertime? 160 degrees. When it's 100 degrees in Reading, that's the shade temperature. You walk outside where it's sunny, it's about 125 in the sun. You walk across the ground barefoot, the surface of a black road is about 200 degrees Fahrenheit in the summertime in Reading. That's why it hurts to walk barefoot. So that's enough temperature to melt a candle. So the little tiny bit of heat that's being produced by the burning string will turn the top of my solid candle to a liquid. Now liquids have some interesting properties. Solids are affected by gravity. Liquids are not necessarily affected by gravity. If I take this piece of paper and I dip it in this liquid, can the water run up the paper? Yes. It does, yeah. It will soak it up, won't it? And that's what happens to the wick. The liquid paraffin starts to run up the wick against gravity, and it runs right up into the flame. So liquid paraffin is soaked up the wick. The solid candle can't go up, but the liquid can. It will run right up into that little flame. Now, liquids are kind of interesting. If I put a match against this candle, not much happens. But if I melt that candle into a liquid and put a match to it, it burns much better. For example, I have a, a chemical here that is a liquid. This is isopropyl alcohol. It's 99%. If I put some in here, what happens if I try to light it with a match? It's not going to do anything. Explodes, huh? It's explosive stuff, huh? So, um, I always like to try experiments, so I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to light this explosive gas with the explosive chemical on fire. Here we go. And just to make sure it's safe, I'm going to put on my safety goggles and move it closer to you, not me. It's not going to do anything. It's not going to do anything. Okay, listen very carefully. <clears throat> Now, immediately you heard a pop. That was an explosion. But now it's just burning normally. Now, some things happen when I put that on top. One is you saw it fog up there. It looks like there's some kind of fog or uh, substance on the surface of that beaker. But what happens is the liquid will burn, but the liquid can't explode. The little pop you heard at the beginning is because alcohol evaporates into the gas. And the vapors in here are explosive. That's the reason you don't want to smoke a cigarette or something when you're gassing a car. The vapors from that gasoline are explosive. The liquid gasoline will burn. It burns even better than that. But the liquid itself doesn't burn too badly. The vapors burn very much. Now keep in mind we've got liquid paraffin that's running up this candle. When the liquid gets up into the flame, then it gets real hot. It's gone from a solid to a liquid. Now it turns from a liquid to a gas. The heat from the wick turns it into a gas or vapor. And as you saw a second ago, the vapor can pop or explode. So solid paraffin doesn't burn very much. Liquid paraffin burns better. Vaporized paraffin burns really well. And that's the reason, did you notice when I lit your candle yesterday, at first it was a little tiny flame? That was the wick. Then all of a sudden the flame grew, didn't it? That was vaporized paraffin in a controlled explosion. Let's put the match in here. At this point, something interesting happens. Once the vapor is on the wick, it's the vapor that burns, and the wick no longer burns. The vapor can combine with the oxygen in the air and burn very nicely. And that's the reason the candle flame grows. So at this point, you're no longer burning the wick. You're burning the gas, paraffin gas, just like your car burns gas. <clears throat> so if that's true, if I can burn the outside of the candle without burning the inside of the flame, and that's what's happening here. Initially, that string's on fire. And then it turns to paraffin to liquid. The liquid runs up the string. And then the gas is burning, but the string is inside, and it can't burn anymore. Do you know why the string doesn't burn anymore? There's no oxygen inside the flame. The oxygen's outside, isn't it? OK, so you can't burn inside. It's just like a minute ago when I lit this alcohol on fire. What part of that was burning? Only the top. There's no oxygen on the bottom. But once I let it evaporate into the air, there's oxygen in the air, and it goes pop, doesn't it? So if that's the case, 
I should be able to take this dollar that's been soaking in salt water and burn it in alcohol and get it to the alcohol to burn without the dollar burning. Hopefully. Hopefully. I love my job. So I'm going to soak it in this alcohol now, and I'm going to try to burn the alcohol without burning the dollar inside. I really hope it works, because I did tell him I'd give him back his dollar. I never said it would look like when I gave it back, though. Now, here's the, it's mostly dry. Here's the reason this works. Salt water is fairly heavy, and I let it soak into the dollar so it was inside the bill. Alcohol is lightweight. It's lighter than water. So it literally floats on the surface of the dollar. The dollar itself has water in it. So when I light it, the fuel's on the outside of the dollar, not inside it, and the fuel burns right off. Now, it did get hot because now that's dry, isn't it? The heat completely evaporated the water out of it, but it did not burn the dollar. That's the same as when you see a stuntman in the movies that's on fire. They put a fire suit on him, and then they coat that fire suit in fuel, and they light it on fire. What's burning? The fuel. Now, if they don't put it out soon enough, eventually the fuel will burn out, and the suit will catch fire. It did burn a little bit at the edge, huh? Singed it. Okay? Um, and the other thing that a stuntman has to do, I've heard, is they have to put baby powder all over their body. Because the heat from that fire will boil their perspiration. If they get, if they get scared and nervous and they start, start to sweat or perspire, the heat from that stunt can boil their perspiration on their body and scald their skin. So they have to stay calm and completely dry inside that suit while they're on fire. And there's a fire crew around with a fire extinguisher, just like I had one handy. This is just in case something goes wrong, they can put out that very quickly. Because once the fuel burns off, it can then start to burn other things. Had I gotten enough fuel on this, once it dried out the paper, it would have started burning it, wouldn't it? Yeah. But fortunately, the fuel burns out before it can completely dry the paper. Here's your dollar back, sir.